Hi, I'm Jesse Yost with Comscope Ruckus. So what do we do when we have switches that we want to onboard a Ruckus cloud and they're having problems? We'll troubleshoot it. Let's get into it. Here we are back again, logged into my Ruckus cloud instance. Uh, today, we're going to take a look at issues with ICX switches onboarding into the cloud. In a previous video, we discussed AP onboarding problems, uh, but today we're going to focus on switching. So I'm going to go over to networking devices, and you can see that I do have one switch that I've added to the cloud. It's assigned to a venue, um, but its status is never contacted the cloud. So how are we going to resolve this particular issue? Um, if you watch the AP onboarding video, you know that we talked about you know, making sure we have the serial number entered correctly. We talked about using the cloud mobile app to take a picture of the barcode and, and onboard it that way. Uh, we also talked about the firewall uh, and to make sure that we've got the uh, URLs um, whitelisted, we've got IP ranges identified and whitelisted, and then we have ports open. Um, and as you know, we have already done that in my environment. So I'm pretty confident that the problem that I'm having isn't a firewall issue. There are a few ways that we can determine the status between the switch and the cloud connection. Uh, the first one that we're going to explore is the actual LEDs on the switch itself. So the ICX7150, ICX7650, and 7850 all have a little CLD icon that kind of gives us a visual indicator of what's going on with this connection. So if it is a solid green, that means that we're connected and everything's good. Uh, then there's a slow flash green, which means that it's attempting to connect to the cloud or it's in the process of connecting to the cloud. And then a fast flash represents that it's receiving configurations from the cloud. Maybe it's a config change or a firmware update. And then in my case, we can see that the LED is just off. So that just, that just represents that it's disconnected, which we kind of already know considering it's not really contacted the cloud. So we need to do some other things to kind of verify and validate that you know, I've got the uh, I've got the switch in the right status to be able to join the cloud. So now that we know we're disconnected, we need to log into the switch to see if we can't figure out from a network connectivity standpoint uh, where we're at. Um, I'm SSH'd into my switch here. Uh, you may be able to do that, or you can console into the switch if you're not sure what the address is. Um, but we can take a look at the environment once we're in there. I'm going to do a show run and kind of see uh, what the what the configuration is. This is layer two code on this switch, and I do have an IP address defined here. Um, but what I am noticing is I do not have a default gateway or any DNS servers listed here. So let me just see, see if I can even ping my default gateway. And it does not look like I can. So let me go ahead and go into config mode and let me put in uh, a DNS uh, address. And then also let me put in an IP default gateway. And let me save that. Let me exit. I can ping that uh, gateway now. Let's see if I can ping a domain name. And also ping a domain name. Awesome. So let's give this a few seconds to see if we can initiate that uh, cloud connection. And as you can see there, the cloud LED on my switch just started slow blinking. So uh, let's give this a few moments and see if it comes up and actually authenticates and onboards into the cloud. We can see the cloud LED has gone solid, which indicates to me that we are connected. I'm going to go back to my cloud uh, dashboard and I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page here. And we can see that now it says it's initializing. So this is a good sign. And now I've refreshed again and we can see firmware updating. So in this case, it looks like not having that DNS or default gateway uh, was a problem. You know, we weren't able to communicate with the uh, addresses we needed to communicate with, and therefore we were unable to establish a connection. If I were using DHCP instead of the statically assigned address, I might have fared better because typically you get uh, the DNS and the gateway as part of the DHCP offer. So. I think uh, in this case, the wound was self-inflicted. Uh, so if you're using static addressing, keep that stuff in mind, but you wanna make sure that you have the correct network uh, configuration for your device. Resolving the network configuration on my switch resolved my issue with switch to cloud communication, 
but maybe your network configuration on your switch is already working as expected and you're able to ping and you're able to reach uh, the addresses you need to reach. So what else can we check on the switch to see what the status of that cloud connection is? Well, there is actually a built-in show manager status command. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that. Show manager status. And this gives us all the information about the cloud connection that we need to determine if this is working well or if it's not working and connected at all. So the first thing that we can see is the configuration status and the operation status of enabled. Um, if this were disabled, we wouldn't be trying, the switch wouldn't be trying to get into the cloud. So having a operational status of disabled means this switch isn't even going to try. So you would need to run the manager reset command um, and that would restart the management uh, connectivity. And hopefully you could rerun this command and it would say enabled. Uh, and then we see a list of all of the controllers that we're trying to connect to uh, by IP and we see the registrar DNS address. So we see the host name for that as well. We can then see um, that we had a response received. And most importantly, and I'm going to just tab this out, we can see that the SSH tunnel is established. So a lot of times you'll see never contacted or in progress. We want this to stay, we want this to say established. Once this is established, that really means that both sides have communicated, have been able to set up the tunnel and are communicating over that tunnel. If the output of show manager status leads you to believe things aren't going well, what we need to think about then is firmware versions. So as you know, uh, 8090D is the minimum requirement for onboarding to the cloud. When you try to add a switch into the cloud, it'll tell you um, that that is a requirement. Um, and then if you are not running that version, or at least that version, and your switch doesn't say that it's cloud ready on the package, you need to do a firmware upgrade. And if you're gonna do a firmware upgrade, we recommend that you do 8095CA. So one way that you can term, determine what the current switch version is, you can do a show version on the switch and it will tell you uh, here what version uh, of switch code you are running. So I am running 8095BB, which does meet the minimum requirement for this particular uh, platform. You will want to check your release notes to make sure that the version you're running supports the cloud. For instance, we just released ICX 9.0 and in the 9.0 release, cloud is not supported. So please, please, please make sure you're reading the release notes and you understand which versions of code support the cloud. So you can also run into the scenario where you've added your switch into the cloud. Maybe it's even done a firmware update but then the status hangs at initializing. You can see that's exactly what's happened to my 7150 here. So what I suspect is that since I added the switch with a non-default configuration, um, it is stuck at initializing because it is trying to push that base venue configuration. So I need to go into PuTTY here uh, and take a look at what I've got. So if I do a show run, uh, I can see that, yeah, I've got a, a non-default VLAN configured and applied. Um, we've got a, uh, we're actually booting off of the secondary flash, um, you know, we're, and we're statically defining our ad addresses. This is kind of what we fixed earlier. So um, you can see that I've got a non-default config. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to erase start and then, then I'm gonna reload the switch and we are going to let that run and we will come back and see if that fixes our issue with the initialization. All right, once all is said and done, you can see here that our switch status is now operational. So what I had shown was that we had a non-default switch. Uh, we did a erase start on that switch and reloaded it. Once it reloaded, it came back up and it applied some firmware from the cloud 
and then it rebooted a second time. I did not show the second reboot on the screen, but it did reboot a second time. And once it came up after that, it is now operational. So if you're trying to add a switch and it's not defaulted, it may let you do that, but it may hang at initializing. So you need to either erase start on that or before even applying any configuration to your switch, um, just have it join the cloud from the factory state. Hopefully this helps folks out there that are running into issues getting their switches to join the cloud. As always, check the release notes for the cloud version that you are running uh, to see if there's any specific caveats you need to be looking out for. And we'll chat with you guys next time.